I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, CB. It's Reed and I with today's morning announcements for Friday, January 31st. Food pantry items are desperately needed for families in our district. Please donate crackers, mac and cheese, fruit cups, and raisins. Items can be dropped off in Ms. Jones' room and all NHS members are asked to check their email concerning the food drive. Center Grange Primary School has an event scheduled for Saturday, February 22nd and is in need of volunteers. You will receive four credit hours. Please see Ms. Jones for more information. Today's lunch is Italian Dunkers with marinara sauce. If you're interested in going to the Washington, D.C. trip to the Holocaust Museum on March 26th this year, please stop by Ms. Elaine's room in NB 113. This field trip is open to Ms. Elaine's Holocaust students from last school year. That's all we have for you today, CD. Have a great day. Good morning, CB. It's Jenna and I'm here today with your sports for Friday, January 31st. Last night, the Lady Warriors beat Blackhawk with a score of 58 to 50. With this win, the Cougars and the Warriors are tied for a first in the section. Christian Fry led the Warriors with 26 points. Today, boys basketball plays Bishop Canavan in a non-section matchup at the shoe box. JV at 6 and varsity at 7.30. Get there and be loud. That's all we have for your sports today, CB. Have a great day. Good morning, CB. It's Montel and I here with a special segment on the Doomsday Clock. The Doomsday Clock has moved closer to midnight from two and a half minutes to two minutes. In announcing the decision, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists cited the failure of President Trump and other world leaders to deal with the looming threats of nuclear war and climate change. But what is the Doomsday Clock, and how accurate is it? Here's a video better explained. This is the Doomsday Clock. It was designed back in 1947 by artist Marta Langsdorf, and the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists sets the clock to show how much time we have left until midnight. Midnight in this case meaning nuclear Armageddon and the end of humanity. In January 2017, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists revealed that the clock ticked 30 seconds closer than last year to the end of times, and cited, among other things, climate change, cybersecurity, nuclear weapons, and Donald Trump as causes. So how accurate is the Doomsday Clock? And why was it made in the first place? The Doomsday Clock first debuted in 1947 as a graphic on the cover of the first edition of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists magazine. Artist Marta Langsdorf was married to Alexander Langsdorf Jr., a Manhattan Project scientist. Langsdorf and other concerned scientists founded the Bulletin two years prior, feeling a responsibility to warn and educate the public about the possibly disastrous consequences of their creations. Atomic bombs had been used for the first time in 1945, killing 130,000 residents of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Initially, the time on the clock depicted the hour hand pointing straight at the zero hour, with the minute hand placed at just seven minutes before midnight. The time was completely arbitrary though. Langsdorf just thought it seemed the right time. The graphic quickly adopted the name of the Doomsday Clock, and eventually gained world recognition as a symbol for the threat of an impending nuclear apocalypse. In every case, dangerous or potentially dangerous events dictated whether the minute hand moved closer to or away from Doomsday, but 2017 is the first time since the Cold War that the Bulletin expressed deep concern about the disposition of an American president towards science and nuclear weapons. First of all, you don't want to say take everything off the table because no, just you'd nuclear. be a negotiator if you do Just that. nuclear. Look, nuclear should be off the table, but would there be a time when it could be used? Possibly. Okay, Even though the outlook seems grim, it's important to remember what the time on the clock is really meant to show. It's not doomsday yet, and on this clock, we can turn back time. When the Doomsday Clock was introduced in 1947, the primary threat to humanity was nuclear weapons. In 2019, nuclear and climate conditions continued to deteriorate, and decisions by global leaders made dangerous situations even worse. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists asked will leaders to join them in 2020 as they work to pull humanity back from the brink without any further delay. The Doomsday Clock now stands out 100 seconds to midnight in what is arguably the most dangerous situation that humanity has ever faced. That's all we have for you today, CV. Have a great day.
Good morning, Mr. Valley. I'm here with Mike Barbudo, here to bring you a segment on Super Bowl Sunday's history. The Super Bowl is played every February between the best team in the AFC versus the best team in the NFC. These two divisions separate and categorize the NFL. The first NFL Super Bowl took place on January 15, 1967, at Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. It was played between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The AFL-NFL merger was the merger of the two major professional American football leagues in the United States at the time. The National Football League and the American Football League, under the merger agreement, the leagues maintained separated regular season schedules for the next four seasons, from 1966 through 1969, and then officially merged between the 1970 season to form one league with two conferences. This year's Super Bowl will be played at Miami Gardens Arena on February 2nd, 2020. Good morning, Mr. Riley. I'm here at Tanner Gillespie. Here to ask him, Tanner, who do you think is going to make the Super Bowl this year? I think the Ravens and San Francisco are going to make the Super Bowl this year. And who do you have winning? I have the Ravens winning the Super Bowl this year. I'm here with Brendan McKeel. Here to ask him, Brendan, who do you think is going to make the Super Bowl this year? I'm going to say that the Super Bowl this year will be the Chiefs and the Saints, and the Saints are going to win the Super Bowl. Well, tell who do you have in the Super Bowl? I got the Ravens in the Super Bowl and then whoever else can be in it. But I know the Ravens go, mm, oh, Jackson, oh, oh. Fast facts about Super Bowl weekend. A fast fact is on Super Bowl Sunday, there are approximately 8 million pounds of guacamole eaten. To dip in the guacamole, approximately 14,500 tons of chips are consumed. 111 million viewers watched in 2011, making it the most watched television program in American history. Jerry Rice, a San Francisco Hall of Famer, has called eight touchdown passes in Super Bowl 29. The second highest is three. The San Francisco 49ers are the only team to have played in more than one Super Bowl and to have no losses. They are currently at five wins and no losses. Tune into the Super Bowl on February 2nd at CB. Have a good day.